Well, get ready, all you sales executives. You're not just surfing the web. You're riding the pipeline, the sales pipeline. The only show that takes a look at what it takes to get your sales pipeline going with the man who seems to know, Matt Hines. How you doing, Matt? I'm doing well. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you, too. Well, yes. every time you tune in, you got somebody calling from some other part of the globe here. So who are we talking to today here? Uh, we are so lucky. We've got such. We've got already an amazing set, uh, lineup of guests. Uh, we got Jim Keenan, who is the CEO of A Sales Guy and the author of the recently published book Not Taught, and uh, so very excited to learn more about Not Taught and talk to talk to Jim about that. Let's let's start with Jim. I can't, like I said, Jim. I can't imagine starting with someone better uh, than yourself. So thanks so much for joining us on the Sales Pipeline Radio today. Come on, man. My pleasure. This is going to be a good time. This is going to be fun. Uh, so this is definitely going to be entertaining. So maybe just start, Jim, by just giving people an introduction to yourself, uh, your background, and a little bit about your business in the book. My background, look, I'm a teacher. I'm a coach. I've been that way my whole life. I like fixing problems, like helping people. So that's what I do. And uh, that sort of transpires through my business. Uh, I have, I'm the CEO and founder of A Sales Guy. We are a sales consulting firm. And what I do is I go in and I help organizations fix, grow, readjust, improve their sales organizations. I'm actually sitting at a client site right now. And then uh, I'm also the author of a new book, Not Taught, What It Takes to Be Successful in the 21st Century, where I teach, once again, and coach people on how to leverage all the wonderful and beautiful advantages the 21st century and the information age have created for success that few people are really aware of. So that's me in a nutshell. That's awesome. I, I want to talk a lot more about the new book, Not Taught. You can find it on Amazon. Uh, just search for Jim Keenan or Not Taught. Uh, you'll find it up there. Brand new book, some great advice. We'll talk about that in a minute. But I also, also want to point out Jim is a regular blogger. Uh, he does podcasts. He does videos. I, I don't know what you're not doing these days, uh, but it's all fantastic stuff. And I think one of the things I always appreciate about your perspective is it's unfiltered, it's raw, but it's real, it's relevant uh, it's something that any sales professional in any industry, no matter who you're selling to, I think it can help you get better. It can help you learn. Talk a little more, just you know, let people that are listening know about the different ways they can kind of pick your brain virtually through the various things you're publishing on a regular basis. Yeah, thank you for that. So obviously you can go to my blog, a salesguy.com, and I think you nailed it. Um, I, I, I am always talking about sales management, sales selling issues, leadership issues, um, client issues. Basically, I, I'm just talking about how the heck – Salespeople can get more sales through their customers and clients, and then how sales leaders can get more out of their salespeople. So that's one, but you can also find me through YouTube. I got a YouTube channel that's Keenan. If you go to YouTube and put in Keenan or a sales guy, you'll find me there. I do a regular show every two weeks where I bring in really, really, really freaking smart people, and we talk about success. We talk about sales. Uh, that's also my YouTube channel. And then one of my favorite is Hey Keenan. If you ask me a question via Twitter or Facebook, or YouTube using the hashtag Hey Keenan, uh, I will answer that question on my show that we do about once a week. We took the last part of the, the winter off, the last part of the year off, but we're going to be starting that up again soon. So I answer your questions personally via Hey Keenan. So those are some of the best ways to, to connect with me. Yeah, Hey Keenan is a lot of fun. If you go to asalesguy.com, in the upper right-hand corner, you'll see a link to Hey Keenan. Uh, just hashtag Hey Keenan, and um, it's a lot of fun to watch. It's uh, you, you always have a great set of topics and things you're talking about, it, but it's also sort of an off-the-cuff uh, piece that you incorporate your staff in as well. So, hey, we're, this is this is the first uh, episode of Sales Pipeline Radio for 2016. It's the beginning of January, therefore, it's also sales kickoff season. And uh, you know, it sounds like you're at a client's office. I know a lot of you know uh, you know thought leaders and sales experts like yourself are helping sales teams kick off the year. What are some things that you are talking about and seeing among sales teams that are themes or focus areas as we uh, kick off the 2016 selling season? That's a great question. Um, much of my work is built around the infrastructure and the development of the sales organization as a whole. So, you know, I'm not really a trainer. Um, when it is demanded by the client, we may offer, you know, we may provide training or, or put training out to folks. But what I do is I help sales organizations look at things from a holistic perspective or strategic perspective. And so through that lens or filter, what I'm seeing a lot is sales organizations just aren't very aligned with what they want. And they're not very clear on their goals. 
so, you know, I have, I've done a lot of these sales kickoffs with new clients. What happens, I'm like, what do you want to get done this year? And they aren't really sure, or they thought some arbitrary number, but outside of that, I'm like, okay, so how are you going to do it? What's your strategy? Uh, I, I, we're going to hire more people? I'm like, well, that, why is that a strategy? So it's really getting sales organizations to be more aligned and more deliberate in exactly the execution mode of how they're actually going to get to their numbers. What are the gaps? the structural gaps, the strategic gaps, the people gaps, and the process gaps, they'll help them get there. Love that. One of the things, themes I hear from you a lot is just really helping sales reps understand that they are personally and directly responsible for their results. And, you know, look, you can get help from your managers, you can get help from your marketing team, but, you know, you speak a lot about empowering and motivating the individual sales rep. And so as you talk about that coordination across the team, you know, how much is marketing a part of that? I feel like we're finally seeing marketing slowly in some cases, and some companies sort of step up to the table and embrace revenue responsibility. Are you seeing that? And even if you're not, like, what's the message that you would have to marketing organizations in this same sort of sales kickoff timing? You know, that's an awesome question. I love that. So I'm not seeing enough as I'd like to see, but this is my message. So CEOs, you need to listen loud and clear because you're the one who can pull this string. And then CROs and CMOs, you need to listen to. But primarily, if you have a marketing organization who is not incented and measured by the exact same numbers that sales is, you're failing. How in the world can marketing be considered a success because they delivered so many campaigns and they got so many impressions and they got, they, you know, they got so many uh, traditional advertising deals set out and, and advertising the Super Bowl. I don't give a shit, right? All of that, yet sales over here missed their number by 15%. How is it that marketing was successful? So that's the big message I have to everybody. Those two need to be on the same page from a measurement perspective. If one is successful, then they're both successful. And if they don't both win, then they both lose. Yeah, I once heard someone, uh, sort of said, sales, sales manager tell me once that, you know, they need marketing to feel the terror, right? You know, you have sales reps at the end of the month, yes. end of the quarter. Uh, it's a scary time. You're scrambling to make your number. And if the, if the marketing team's off having a happy hour because they met their retweet goal, um, that doesn't really speak to very much alignment. Uh, we're talking to Jim no. Keenan today, who is the CEO of a sales guy, a sales guy consulting, <laughs> Forbes contributor. Four time top 50 sales influencer, uh, from top sales world. Just a great guy, uh, great influencer. If you're not checking out his content, make sure you do that. Talk a little about the book. I mean, before we had the break here, you know, tell me more about sort of how the book came to be, the book not taught. What was the impetus for this? I mean, I, you know, given the breadth of things you talk and write about, you could have covered a lot of different ground and kind of got a lot of different themes, but t- talk about the idea behind not, th- not taught. So the idea of not taught is that I recognize that things have changed. We moved from the industrial age to the information age. And with that, what it takes to be successful, the opportunities that have been created for us in the new ways of behaving and engaging have completely changed. And people ask, well, why did you write this book? You know, you're in sales. You help sales organizations. It's completely outside of your, your, your wheelhouse. It's not about sales. And it's about giving. It's so funny. I got to this because I chose to give. Adam Grant has a great book called Give and Take, How the Most Successful People Win by Giving. And this is a perfect example of that. A friend of mine asked me to speak for free to the University of Denver, one of their um, uh, graduate classes. And I said, well, okay, I'll do it. What do you want me to speak about? And he said, what do they need to know when they graduate? And so when I sat down to create this presentation, I started to realize as I was doing it, I'm like, oh, my God. This is completely different, completely different than when I was graduating. Oh, my, this is so different. And so I gave that presentation. There were 12 of them at the time, 12 things that were different that need to pay attention to, and they absolutely ate it up. And then from that, I realized, wait a minute, if they don't know, nobody knows, or most people don't know, and so there's more here. And so from that giving came out something even more for me that I expanded on those notions and wrote a whole book about it. You know, one of the things I, I love the concept. We're going to talk a little more about that as we get back from the break in a few minutes. But, uh, you know, you, you, uh, recently, I think literally yesterday published on your blog a, a discussion with Chris Brogan that you, you, t- you called him a thought leader, which I liked a lot. It's sort of a take on the idea of a, uh, of, of thought leader. 
Um, and I like the idea of so many things that you know people that are in the field that have done the work uh, have been uh, have been doing, and the, and the and the impact that they can have on our business and in our lives. Uh, if you want to learn more about Chris, definitely check out salesguy a salesguy dot com. Uh, go to the blog; you'll read the uh, first in a weekly series called the Taught Leader series, uh, based on the book Not Taught. Uh, Chris Brogan is quoted on the in the book calling. Uh, Calling the not taught the Red Bull for the brain, which not only is a great analogy, but if you if you know uh, Mr. Keenan at all, you know that he has three of probably numerous trademarks: it's the the red headphones, the plaid shirt, and the the ever ever present Red Bull uh, can uh, hanging out hanging out next to him. Uh, Jim, you know what? Before we go to break again, what you know what what are some of the other things that you're reading and thinking about this year? Who are some of the other people that you're learning from? Who are some of the other people that have taught you and influenced you? Uh, as you've grown in your career and, and experience, you know, it, well, that because uh, I know you want to get to break. I'll, I'll make it quick, and if you want to dig in deeper later, one of the people that influenced me most is my grandfather. He was a very quiet man, and I'm not a very quiet person, but he's very reflective. He influenced me in a way that said, "If you're going to be out there, or if you're going to be, you know, in everybody's face, you better damn well be good. And if you're not, just sit back and be quiet." So he was, he's a great stabilizing influence in me. Um, he's been gone for a long time, but I, I think about him often. And then today, people that influence me today, look, he's in a lot of ways, we're a lot alike. I didn't even know who he was at first until someone saw me at the end of a speaking engagement and said, oh my God, you, you remind me so much of Gary Vaynerchuk. I'm like, who's that? <laughs> um, but I decided to follow Gary. We've had a few email conversations, but I really admire him because he's not afraid to say what he thinks. I'm sort of the same way. Um, I love Chris because Chris is a true giver. I've learned a lot from Chris in the idea of giving. Giving is, is in my thing about yesterday. I, he says, look, our job is to serve our community, and that is a phenomenal way of putting a lot of what I talk about in the book. Uh, so those are just a couple of people. There's so many. There's so many. I'm, I'm grabbing something from someone all the time. I'm always learning. Yeah, I think it's really, really important to make sure you do that. It's always interesting to, to, to hear people like yourself talk about those that have uh, those that have influenced you and taught you, uh, you know, to, uh, and help you along the way. You know, you mentioned earlier, you know, that the speaking to, to college kids, we we had an internal conversation about you know who's really responsible for teaching marketers uh, and sales professionals uh, along the way. Curious, just real quick answer. You know, what what what's your advice for those young people coming out of school, starting their careers in sales and marketing? Um, you know, what should they be reading? What should they be learning? Where should they be looking for the kind of experience and knowledge that they need to be successful? They don't need to own their learning. I'm glad you started with that premise. Look at folks, if you're coming out of high school or, or, or college, or better yet, you've been in the workplace for years, you need to own your learning. Deliberate learning, self-directed learning, it's one of the chapters. You need to own it. Once you do that, look, uh, Chris Brogan, Gary Vaynerchuk, and people, two people I mentioned, if it comes into sales, you ask you have to follow Anthony Andarino. You have to follow Jill Conrad for sure. These are good, solid people with good, solid bases. Um, if you're into marketing, um, you need, uh, like I said, follow Chris. Follow social media marketing, the, uh, the blog there. There's so many people out there. I'm sitting there thinking, I feel like it's an Academy Award, and I feel like I'm forgetting somebody, right? <laughs> there's, there's, there's so much out there that if you yeah. just pick one or two people who are known for their space, that will spider because they'll talk about other people and they'll point you in other directions and you can't help but get good at it. Um, I know David Merriman Scott from a marketing perspective. Read his book. Absolutely read his book and check him out. Yeah, I think, you know, if I could summarize what you said, I think it's just continue to be hungry and to continue to learn. And you know, whether you're two months out of school or two, or two years or two decades out of school, just keep learning. Uh, if you're in sales, one of the people you want to learn from is Jim Keenan. We've got him here. We're going to talk more about not taught here after the break. This is Sales Pipeline Radio. <laughs> Whether you're producing a seminar series, user's conference, lunch and learn, or exhibiting at a trade show, Validar has a solution. From capturing leads at trade shows to managing on-site registration, tracking session attendance, gathering information, and providing sponsors lead retrieval, we have a full suite of solutions for you. Since 2005, Validar has been turning corporate events and trade shows into better business. Call 888-784-2929 or visit us at Validar.com. Wow. Marketing predictions are out for 2015, and marketing success is changing. Did you know that Google is now actively tracking your business and personal brand and online reputation? Online and offline marketing has changed. Google is driving more than 85% of your traffic. 
And if your brand is inconsistent or has poor mobile usability, your rankings and traffic can suffer in 2015. To learn how your business is currently viewed and what can be done to improve your brand's visibility and authority, contact SunUp Group for a free marketing analysis. It could be a business game changer. Visit www.sunupgroup.com today or call 877-609-3840, extension 700. All right, let's pick back up with Matt and his guest. Awesome. Thanks very much. Boy, these half hours go so fast. Uh, I wish we had a lot more time. We are going to be live again on Thursday, January 21st. We're going to have Joanne Black, the author of Pick Up the Damn Phone and uh, blogger at uh, No More Cold Calling. If you want to listen again to this episode uh, with Jim Keenan, you want to listen to our past episodes, you can check them out at salespipelineradio.com and also go and find them up on the podcast up at iTunes. Uh, here again with Jim Keenan, the CEO of a sales guy consulting uh, author of the recent book, Not Taught. Um, you know, Jim, we talked about some of the topics and themes for, you know, sales organizations going into 2016. Uh, let's, let's, let's go to the negative just for a second. Talk about some of the things that are driving you nuts. What are, what are some of the bad habits? What are some of the, uh, what are some of the, uh, negative trends or some of the old habits that you still see among sales teams that you think needs to, needs to be put to bed? Dude, this is going to surprise the heck out of you. Um, and I mean it with full, full heart and passion. And a lot of people listening are not going to like to hear this and they're going to be pissed off and it's going to prove my point. What I see year in and year out above all other bad habits is 80% of salespeople cannot sell. They think they're selling. They can't sell to save their life. You're all terrible. All of you. I've written about this so many times. I don't know what to do with myself. And the reason this is, is because Almost no salesperson actually truly, truly knows how to sell to the real intrinsic motivations and the problems that are driving those of a client. I come into more customers and I sit down and their salespeople have no idea why that customer is in trouble, the problems they're facing. They'll say, oh, I'll say, what's the problem? They'll say, oh, they're struggling with two separate systems. That's not the problem. That is not the problem. Why does two separate systems affect their business? What happens when they have the separate system? How does it affect their ability to do their job? How does it affect their ability to compete? And no one has any idea. Oh, I don't know. Well, now because you're not selling so that's the problem. Most people cannot sell. They are so high level pitching products, pitching ideas, pitching solutions, pitch, 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 and yet they don't know how to sell. That's my problem. You can't tell them too passionate about that one, huh? No, definitely not passionate at all, and it's too bad that we're on radio, and I, I can't see you either, but I can only imagine the arms flailing and the walking around in whatever conference room you're doing this from at your client's office. So I appreciate that. I mean, as a follow-up then. <laughs> You know, there's, uh, you hear a lot and it seems like it increases people saying, well, sales is dead. Cold calling is dead. You know, you can't, don't be selling, be helping. And uh, there's a, there's an implication in some of that that, you know, that, that, that selling is a lost art or that selling is no longer relevant in the world of an engaged, engaged prospect. Now, I know when I, when I, when I threw that at Mike Weinberg, uh, boy, that was a softball and I wound him up for a while. And I know that you're passionate about this as well. So when you hear people say selling is dead, uh, what, what's your reaction to that? That's a joke. Whoever came up with that never sold a thing in their life. Look, I get it. Really small, high transaction things you could probably get away without, quote unquote, a salesperson. But let me explain something to you. The assumption that that statement makes, this goes back to what I was saying before, most people can't sell. The assumption is the buyer knew the problem and knew they had a problem. That whole premise is based on what's called demand reaction. Hey, I have a problem. I'm hungry. I can pick out a restaurant on my own. You're right. You can't. But hey, my, I need a new CRM system. I think I can pick out what I want. Well, maybe, but why do you need a CRM system? Is it really a CRM system? That's the problem. And so the minute you start to realize that people may not know what they don't know and they don't know they have a problem, good salespeople can create demand and get people to buy stuff, not because they tricked them, but to get them to say, oh, my gosh, I didn't know that this was causing me a problem. 
I was unaware there was a higher level solution, and yes, I will buy this. But you can't do that when the customer doesn't know what they don't know. And I actually just wrote about this on Forbes like four or five days ago, talking about this. I use myself as an example. I bought something as simple as a, well, you're going to laugh at me, a Palm Pilot case (laughs) Um, about 10, 12 years ago when my battery ran out, when I ran into the store to buy the charger, and the person asked me if I wanted a case, and my case was brand new, and I was getting pissed at them. And by the time, within five minutes, I bought a new case. And I'll let you go read that article on Forbes to find out why and how he got me to do that. But he created demand I didn't know I had. And so everybody sells on, I'm sorry, sells on demand reaction these days, and I'm about selling on demand creation. You know, we're all looking for something that's going to make our jobs easier. And I think, you know, salespeople are no different. Uh, you know, I, I, I fundamentally believe salespeople have among the hardest, if not the hardest job in the room and with, in most companies. Uh, and despite that, you know, we're all looking for something that's going to make things faster and easier. We're looking for shortcuts. We're looking for the latest fad. We're, we're hoping that the new technology is going to help us. And there are certainly new ideas, new fads, new channels, new technology that helps. But I think, you know, just to, you know, summarize some of the stuff you're talking about here, um, you know, new technology isn't going to help. You know, social selling alone isn't going to do it. There's fundamentals around buyer centric selling and just the discipline of getting the work done that is the foundation for most salespeople. Talk about that for, for just a second. Yeah, I, I, I love what you said, and, and I, I think you nailed I'm not a big fan of jargon, but I think that's a good one, biocentric selling. I don't care how many uh, software service tools you have. You know, I don't care how many of these new um, applications that you have to help your sales team be more efficient. If they're unable to do an effective discovery, if they're unable to ask provoking questions, if they don't have the knowledge base to dig into the process, processes of your customers and how they do things, if they don't know how to do what I call sell to the gap, that's actually my next book, um, sell to the gap, they don't know how to uncover a current state, understand what the future state could look like, what is the gap between the two and what's preventing them from getting there, and have those consultative discussions they're not, I don't care what applications, I don't care what tools you have at your disposal. And as much time as we spend trying to give them more of this quick fix stuff, I think we're building more and more sales who don't know how to sell, who intrinsically don't know how to sell. And Mike Weinberg gets it. He is a consummate salesman. His books are phenomenal. You need to read them. And so does Joe Conrad. And learn people that selling is truly, truly about consulting. And I think another good book that, that, my boys did over there at CEV, oh, my God, a Challenger Sale is another one you need to read because those are about true selling books, and that's the way to go. Tools ain't going to help you. Absolutely. I want to thank our guest today, Jim Keenan, CEO of A Sales Guy Consulting, author of Not Taught. Jim gave us a lot of great people to listen to, some additional great books to follow, uh, but definitely make sure you get a copy of Not Taught uh, by Jim Keenan. You'll find it on Amazon.com. You can read some great summaries up on A Sales Guy. Um, Jim, thanks very much for being with us today. My pleasure, man. This was a blast. Thank you very much. You did a great job. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. Uh, well, we are out of time. I want to thank everyone again for being with us today. We are going to be live again on January 21st, 1 o'clock Pacific. Uh, if you want to check out uh, this episode again, you can go to salespipelineradio.com. If you want to see a transcript of this uh, episode, uh, you can get that in about a week on heinzmarketing.com. Uh, until a couple weeks from now, this is Matt Hines. It's been Sales Pipeline Radio. You're not just searching the web. You're riding the wave. The sales pipeline wave.